I just got three things to say. God bless our troops. God bless America. And gentlemen, start your engine! to be sharing, Fred. Happy holidays, pal. Oh, Fred. Fruity and Cocoa Pebble cereals, part of this nutritious breakfast. Ho, 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 ho.
soon. Body. There he is. Hello. Yeah, bro, you can check out my likes. You too. Okay. Uh, it is not tank controls, right? Hmm. And what are well, There's probably really a mod for tank controls. Oh, yeah, you probably have that. Good luck. Good I mean, luck. I played Resident Evil re the one remake without the tank controls because the, the Steam version doesn't have it and still gets it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Boop, 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 all right, just don't, don't, don't uh, say a lot here, uh, producer. Damn it! It's <laughs> warning you, man. Uh, okay, I need to tweet, but other than that, I think I'm good. I think. I guess I should test the music. I'll do good? that too. I don't know. Yeah. Be a good idea. Listen to Tim Dogs. Okay. I DM you a couple of times and you, you didn't answer me? back. I was like, is this fucking here to die? I, I. Kinda, I, w I went to the doctor and I took Emmy to the doctor and that was after we went to uh, her appointment were, earlier in the day and then by the time I got all that stuff done, it was like 8.30 after getting back from the pharmacy and then I had to get him to ready no, you for bed. Dead. I was kinda <laughs> dead. Uh, did you guys yes, hear that? You... Yes. yes. Okay. You guys hear me? Alright, that's not loud enough for them though. Now it is. And then the tweet. That will be good. Oh, this was almost bad, huh? They okay, Resident Evil 4. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh my god. Resident, Resident Evil 4 remake has sold over 7 million copies. That's pretty oh, good. 7 million nice. suckers. Sucker? <laughs> yeah, all right. I can tell when I'm being trolled. <laughs> <laughs> I think that game is great. Yeah. <laughs> um, <sighs> test this. One, two, three. I am picking. There we go. That's better. Do la misma viaje. La incondición. Sorry. Was listening to. My neighbor was listening to Luis Miguel all day. All right. There we go. There we go. All right. Cool. I think we're ready to start, Mikey. You want we're me to bring ready? it in? Okay, starting in five, four, three. Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now! Yeah, yeah, let's get this over with. <laughs> Woof, woof. Hi, I'm Mike Minotti, and I am a Nintendog. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I am a Nintendog. And we are... The last of the Nintendogs! Today, Mario Movie sequel, probably, maybe, we got some release dates for the last few Nintendo Switch games we know about anyways, and Nintendo 3DS hidden gems, hidden lay gems, hidden... Adam Sandler, don't let that guy in here. His uncut gems, that's what it's called. Uh, <laughs> what? You good? Yeah, you okay, bud? <laughs> oh, I'm good. I did wake up from a nap, and I'm like in a bit of a nap oh, fog. Okay. Like right. Weird dreams, and like, I was like, I was like what's well, going I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm great. Go get yourself a 10% alcohol by volume beer. And and make things right. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know if I have any beer in the fridge right now. I think I've got some. Go I talk to have... D D Jeff Bacalar's dad and get a twelve-year-old Budweiser. Oh my god, that was incredible! Twelve-year-old man. I think my dad was like that too because he just didn't drink beer, but like he'd have some sometimes. So like I don't know, uh, but yeah, like the beer would just get ridiculously old and never thrown out. It's a, it is incredible that he. Transferred it from one house to another. Yeah, when the beer was that old. <laughs> right. <laughs> the perfect opportunity to throw it out. Nope. Coming with me to my son's nope. house. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> <laughs> it's beer. Uh, you never draw a beer. Right. Right. Uh, how's it going, Jeff? It's going pretty good. Um. Yeah. I was. Uh. 
busy weekend, um, and that kind of carried over to a busy Monday, but it felt pretty good. I finally got a chance to hot, head over to the doctors, and they gave me some antibiotics, and I hope I think that's starting to work, so I'm feeling pretty good. I'm on some antibiotics, too, from when uh, when I came back uh, from Florida, and I was sick, and I'm still on them. My dad got me some good ones, I think, because they oh, like, fix things immediately, right? Uh, so that's good. I don't know if like that's why I was tired. I, I I forget if antibiotics even have side effects. I don't know what the hell that they do. I don't know what a biotic is. I don't know what it means to anti them. Well, you know, uh, do you know what a probiotic helping. is? Yeah, that wasn't a invitation for you to teach me something. Oh, it's like yogurt, but the opposite of yogurt. Oh well, I'm glad I'm not getting yogurt. That would be disgusting. <laughs> yeah, you're Jeez. getting the uh, you're getting the anti yogurt. Yogurt, like the one dairy they messed up with. Disgusting. <laughs> uh, it's because it, is it because it often has fruit in there? Fruit, it's like real tangy and like I don't like that consistency. I don't. I just don't like yogurt. Do, I don't do know you, what it is. Do you do sour cream? No, not not really. Actually, because it, it's very similar. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. All right, that that yeah, tracks. I don't like sour. I don't like tangy. Sour. I don't know. I like some tangy. I like I like vinegar, which is tangy but in a different way i don't know don't like it anyway uh, you should try to get some probiotics if you're taking antibiotics or else you're gonna have tummy issues <laughs> jeff i have Crohn's. i don't have any tummy issues <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. uh, oh don't i don't like whipped cream either cast cutter but that's like a sugar thing i don't know much of a sweet tooth but even, even back when i liked sugar i didn't like whipped cream something about that consistency I like whipped cream. threw I could me off cream. also um I, I'm I'm awaiting approval on my Mortal Kombat Mythologies uh, Sub Zero speed run, so I, it, I is, submitted it. Is it like it has to be viewed by a person? Because that's how it works on the Mike Tyson one, where it's like right. someone on that forum is designated as like, "Hey, I can approve these things, so I need to watch it." And I remember I, I, one of my first ones got denied because I accidentally did a uh, a time freezing skip uh, where it stopped the clock in one of the fights, so I had to do it again. I think, um, yeah, so that's one of the reasons, like, I I'm definitely going to be doing a run better than this. I think I could do quite a bit better. But if this got accepted, it would be number nine. Uh, now, granted, there's only nine submitted speed runs. So I wouldn't be last place, at right. least, anyways. That's, what, that's what's important, right? Right. I don't think I did it. The one mistake I did do, which I don't think matters, is my splits had the wrong category name in it. But I don't I don't know if that matters. Maybe it does. Uh But I think I'm okay. And the person who has to look at it, uh, I'm pretty sure, is the uh, number one record holder who was in my stream helping me um so you know he's at my side right he wanted to deny that it'll be fine um the splits thing it, for mike tyson it was just like a spreadsheet in excel is that what that is for you too or do you oh, like no there's there's an, an app i i, was, I got yeah uh, i was wondering it seems like oh, like it's an app okay wow yeah live split is what i'm using nice play, baby yeah wow, okay yeah. You use that, interesting yeah you use that for a lot of uh, a lot of peer running you're yeah, actually, see, you're familiar you know, with that for a future piece of content, by the way, Jeff. Oh, yeah, okay, all right, let's go. Well, I'm going to go. Yeah, it's it's pretty uh pretty simple thing to to get a hold of. I was able to figure it all out. Yeah, no, I'm not worried. I just like it's like because I've seen that what looks like an app in so many speed runs that I figured it must be like some of kind of like half official thing. Uh, but right. then when I did my speed run, it's like no, no. Here's an Excel spreadsheet, and we're just going to fill in the numbers by hand and stuff like that. Well, so I was like a little bit like, wait, okay. Well, because weird. You, you're in this odd place of playing a game where it gives you the time very precisely, right? At the okay. End of each run, and that's how people time that game for real time, which is a lot of other speed runs, right? Or, okay. Um, then uh, yeah, you need splits. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, I went to the Cavs game yesterday, but more importantly, I went to a Wahlburgers before it. Oh, I don't know if I've ever been to a Wahlburgers. You know, it's better than I was expecting, actually. Wait, what, what What the fuck is up with Mark Wahlberg in Cleveland? Does he have more to do with Cleveland than yeah, that? What are you talking right, about? Right, right down the street from somebody's house, trying not to dox myself, is a Mark Wahlberg uh, 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 car dealership. Uh, and that well, is, I mean, and, and that is him. It's not like, oh, some random dude named Mark Wahlberg. No, it's Mark Wahlberg okay. car dealership. Cause like there's a bunch of Wahlburgers, but this was an early one. This was this came out pretty quickly. This Wahlburger specifically, where I mean, they're from where are they from? Boston? Where the I yeah? Mean, they're from they're, Boston. they're from Boston. Yeah. So Family. it's not like he's from here. I have no idea. I mean, you know, Cleveland's a bit Boston esque, I suppose. Yeah, a little less racism, but yeah, it. yeah, Boston a little coded. better in a lot of ways. Better in most ways. Yeah. Better sports teams for sure. Oh, uh, without a doubt. 
Yeah, so I, I don't know. Maybe it's a, he's, he's got some kind of Cleveland affinity. Maybe he just knows, you know. We let everybody make all their jokes about Cleveland. Like, oh, yeah, it's real shitty. Don't come here. <laughs> don't move here or anything. Yeah, Mark yeah, Wahlberg's taking it over. Watch out. Yeah, surprisingly good. I, it, was, it was more of a sit-down thing than I was expecting, but uh, I don't know. It's huh. like, if you make your burger place and it's smash burgers and you're using American cheese and you have a burger sauce, I think you're 95% of the way there. Yeah, that sounds like the battle's mostly won in that situation. I guess I, was, I would expect it to be kind of like a five guys and not a uh, sit-down place. Right. Interesting. I thought I was going to go up to a counter. Exactly. Huh. Like, yeah, but no, like, you know, we got to sit down. We actually sat down at the bar. There was a bunch of TVs. They had a large amount of drafts uh, there, too. I wasn't expecting the whole bar beer situation, too. Um, so, yeah, a, uh, a, a surprising recommendation for Mark Wahlbergers. Uh, I don't know if you were listening to the Bombcast or if we said this publicly. We might have said it in private, but I, I figuring we shouldn't hide this from you, even though it would be a fun surprise, because I think I might need your help to ensure it happens. Uh, Dan and Jan said they would like to go to a tiki bar in Boston when we're there for PAX. <laughs> so if you want to like do some research and find a good one, I would I would love that. Oh, absolutely. Oh, uh, nobody would like to go to a tiki bar. That's what more I said. Than Mike, Mikey. Mike, Mike, sounds... Mike's big on tiki bar. So if you, you guys yeah, say this, it'll like happen. have a Trader Vix or something like that. But uh, yeah, I'll figure that out. Maybe okay. not right now for sure. I would never. <laughs> um, yeah, no well, I, I knew what I was getting into when I mentioned it. So, yeah. Uh, well, we're going to have fun. It's just a matter of fu probably finding like uh, one relatively close to the convention center. I can't. That's upsetting that that's like in a week, by the way. It's next Thursday. That is so weird. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. Now we got very excited. It's just like, oh, I got to like be in that mindset of getting ready to, uh, to go to a place. Okay. Yeah, I got to pack a bag. Packing a bag sucks. I always forget something. It's never anything important. I always make yeah. sure I have all the important things, but it's something that I would have wanted to bring with me. And I didn't. So, oh, well. Yeah, I like start. I'm like, okay, definitely got plenty of underwear, plenty of socks. And it'd be like, well, I, I have like two less pairs of pants than I would that I wish I had. And that, what did I do here? Why did I do this? Yeah, I'm not good at it. It's a big part of it. Pants are pretty. In terms of things you can get away yeah, with no, wearing you, from all both you're days. Right. So. You're right. But it's like, even then, I'm like, I wish I just had like one more pair of pants. Right. And in your mind, like, everyone's going to notice for right. sure. Exactly. And yeah, it's just like to have that buffer zone in case something happens to the pants, something gets stained or something like that. It's like, okay, now I have to worry about finding a dry cleaner. So I'm not going to do that. That's such a hassle. Even though I think the last time I found a dry cleaner on a trip, it was at PAX East, I think, because uh, I was um, at Chipotle with some friends uh, and uh, I was waiting to pay. And the guy was bringing out the red chili sauce, and he fucking dropped it on the ground Hell from yeah. a great height, and it Hell slammed yeah. on the ground and exploded out of the pan directly at me onto my nice jacket that I really, really, really liked. And so I'm like, well, fuck. And I think they gave me, like, a free burrito, uh, but most of my day that day was, like, finding a cleaner to clean my jacket. Yeah, don't you wish you were kind of more of a jerk in situations like that? Because, you know, like... Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna get everything from that that you should. Like, yeah, this is yeah, a you're right. It would be nice to get a little bit more from that, but you're right. But I, it, I can't be a that, jerk. I can't. Is that I feel bad that the other person feels bad, and I try to comfort them. Right. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, you're just a. I mean, you're a minimum wage worker. I'm not gonna give you a hard time. That would be crazy. But it's not like the corporation is gonna step in and really make things right there. Of course not. No, you gotta you gotta raise some noise. Uh people wondering why we're wasting more time than usual. Uh. Not a whole, not a whole lot of Nintendo stuff yeah. going on, except for some, except for some the, the Mario Day stuff, which uh, you know, I happened to be on Game S mornings on Monday. We talked about it a little bit there, but we'll bring, yeah, let's 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 see if we have any evolved thoughts on all this stuff. We had that little Mario Day presentation. Here's an here's a new thought, Jeff, because we had that, because we had the partner direct, because we really don't know anything coming out beyond, you know, Paper Mario. We just mentioned two Princess Peach and stuff that has now been pegged for the next few months. My mind's not distracted because I said the words Princess Peach and then pegged. What <laughs> are the um, odds what? that we're getting? Don't worry about that. What are the odds that we are getting an actual Nintendo Direct scene to sort of fill out the rest of this schedule in some point in the next few months? Or you think they're. Are, are we really kind of be just in like a slow limbo? We're going to get some tweets and stuff like that. Uh, no, I think the chances are pretty decent that we still get a direct of some kind with in the summer months around that range. Anytime from May 
through the end of June. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's possible. And then, you know, if they do, if they do have like the, the Twitter announcements, the video drops throughout the summer, which they've done before. They did that a few years ago, like in the time we were still, when we were doing this show, I think they did that. Um, and then that means, you know, we get to later in the summer, we get to August, we get to September and maybe they have something then to just set up like one, one big holiday release, something like that. I, I think they will probably have something this summer though. Maybe not in June, maybe not the typical E3 time frame, um, but around that zone, I think they come out and they say, hey, we are putting out these last few, like, like one or two more games that would still be coming out at that point. And then for later this year, here is an update on all this stuff that's happening. And it's going to be like four or five remakes and maybe one thing that's new. Um, and, and that will get you through this year. And, and I, yeah, I think that's that. Speaking of remakes, uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Doors coming out on May 23rd. And then Louise mentioned too, HD is on June 27. It is pretty interesting the difference of excitement between these two things that we seem to see uh online jump. I guess one is a franchise that has kind of only gotten better since that game come out came out and the other one is a franchise that peaked with this exact entry that we are getting a uh remake of and this is like it is more of a remake while well, Lisa Bitch 2 maybe more a remaster lines are a little bit uh blurred there. But what is your excitement level for both of these titles? Um I there, it's you know, it's high enough for what they are. I mean, the th thousand year door is definitely something that I'm like, hey, that is, uh, I, I want to be playing that. Luigi's Mansion 2 is, I, I, I will check on, in on it. Like, I'm going to, if I get a code, I will test it out and see, may, hey, maybe it's better after going in HD and maybe they edited some stuff. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I'm not like, uh, you know, thousand year door. I played it a handful of times now. Uh, definitely have been playing it on stuff like my Steam Deck. When I got the Steam Deck, I sure. was, it's one of the games I was playing on there. So it's not like something I need to rush out and play. But still, it's like one of those situations where oh, it's out for everybody, and I, it's fun that it's part of the zeitgeist. So I want to be part of that. Yeah, I think. I mean, I, I love Thousand Year Door, and I haven't actually played it since you know it came out for the GameCube. So I'm very excited to go back to it just to see how it still holds up and my estimation and. It, you know, the, the, uh, the graphical updates here are a bit more substantial than I was expecting. Just looking at screenshots, so it's kind of hard uh, to tell. Uh, but the game, uh, at least, is looking very good aesthetically. You know, the frame rate thing, I'm trying to just uh, I'm trying right. to get over it a little bit. I'm trying to prepare myself. For you, okay, I was going to say, are you preparing yourself or are you just like, like not going to worry about it until it's here and you know one way or the other? I think I, I try to prepare myself, even though I think it's ridiculous. I need to prepare myself for that. Uh Again, even even with like you know all the graphical updates, it's like you know, Mario Odyssey ran at sixty frames per second. I don't know why any Paper Mario game, like, and I know Origami King did, but I don't know why any Paper Mario game needs to run at thirty frames per second. Now, granted, again, like of all the games that have to run at thirty frames per second, turn-based RPG not the worst one. Although there is that timing stuff here, and that stuff just going to feel. A little bit worse at half the frame rate than it was before. Again, a little bit worse. Again, I, I'm going to be thinking about it. I'm not going to be obnoxious about this and keep right. bringing this up every time, everybody. Like, that's it. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it. the game looks really nice compared to the GameCube version. They made a lot of updates. I think that if the trade-off for that was 30 frames per second, I'm not, like, stoked about that. Uh, but you're right. It's not the end of the world. Right. You know, but, yeah. So I'll, I'll play. I'll see, I'll see if it really impacts me. I bet I'll probably uh, probably get over it. Quickly, Who yeah. knows? And uh, maybe there's still hope. I don't know. There was like another little gameplay gameplay clip that uh was at the end of some like montage that came out. And again, it's like it goes by so fast. I'm not sure what that frame rate was, but probably thirty. Um, Luigi's, I don't know why I am so ambivalent towards Luigi's Mansion Two. Again, it's not like I was a big fan of the game. I also didn't hate it. I, that game did have that weird mixture mission structure set up, right? Where uh, like like a lot of portable games, like like old Monster Hunters, like Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, right? right. Where it's like a set of kind of like being this more open, not even open, but kind of big progression, natural progression thing. You're always going back to a menu to like then pick the next like slice of gameplay that you're gonna have. Then you go out there. Something about that was never really my my favorite uh, sort of style. Uh, especially compared to Legion Mansion 3, just incredible. Right. You know, it's one big hotel, but it's split into these different floors that each feel like a level, and yet it's all connected. I mean, the design of Legion Mansion 3 is so good. I guess that's the issue, is Legion Mansion 3, and normally I don't always think like, oh, a sequel kind of just makes a previous game unnecessary. Legion Mansion 3, though, 
is so good and such an improvement over what Next Level was doing with their first Luigi Mansion, which is two, that I don't know. I'll just I kind of just want to play that again, really. I, I do think I'd be happiest just replaying Luigi's Mansion 3 rather than trying to play two. Yeah, that, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Um. Then uh, the, the, the kind of uh, the kind of big announcement here was that they are officially making a new Mario movie, which, you know, duh, uh, of course they are. But uh, Miyamoto talked about this because the way movies are, it's not like they had like some teaser clip to show us or something like that. Really, it's just saying, hey, yeah, we're happy. This is happening. The same directors. So it's, it's just that Mario team. The language here was kind of weird, Jeff. They, they wouldn't say, "Yeah, we're making new, uh, uh, we're making Super Mario Brothers uh, uh, movie 2. They're saying a new movie that expands that universe and, and, and things like that. I, it still seems weird to me that would be anything but a sequel, at least from the main team. But what are you thinking? Do you think this is a chance that this is the Luigi, uh, Luigi's Mansion movie, or it is a Yoshi first movie, or you think it's just? going to be mario 2 at the end of the day and the <laughs> language is just maybe a translation thing yeah i mean i I, I it's probably gonna be mario 2 but i wonder if they might like what they maybe what they mean by this is that this is super mario brothers world and they're gonna call it that or something like that and they're and they will uh, take that like to mean that'd be a good idea we are actually expanding it to include more characters and make it a big deal out of yoshi um but it's like it's more like, yeah, it's more like the universe expanding than a direct sequel to the story that was told in the first one. I could see them thinking of it that way, and that's how they're why they're talking about it this way. Now, at the same time, it, it could be a completely other movie, a complete a, like different movie, not just Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, something like that. But um, I I bet it's Super Mario Two in all but name. Yeah, I like that idea of actually just calling it Super Mario Brothers World because um, you could call the third one Galaxy, right? And those 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 three always kind of had a pretty fun naming convention in terms of just like bigger kind of things, right? As, but you know, so I like the names Mario Sunshine and Odyssey, but you know, uh, Brothers, then World, then Galaxy. It's like it keeps getting bigger. It's crazy. We already had the Luma, right? So I, at some point, the stuff's going to get Galaxy. They already talk about galaxies. Uh, specifically, that's what they call all the different worlds that they do visit amongst the pipes in the first movie. What's the Japanese word for sequel? Uh, that's what I wonder. Maybe they just don't have that word. And that's why <laughs> Maybe not. It kind of <laughs> sounded weird. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but like, you know, I mean, it was, is it, when, you, when you hear this like quote unquote announcement, that's something that excites you. Or are you a bit like me? Like, yeah, I mean. I, I'm going to be excited for that movie, but yeah, of course you're making that. Uh, right. I don't know if I need like a direct style announcement of it without something to kind of go along with that. Yeah, I mean it's it's movies, so we like it, that. This was always going to happen where they were going to tell it, tell us about it when like they were about to start animation on it, which is what uh, right. Cr Chris Son said, Chris Melodandri. Um <laughs> Chris Son. Yeah, uh, and it, and it's like yeah, I, that's how movies work. So I I was expecting that. That wasn't too weird. But if it's like what I need to get excited about this, it's not this. You're right. I'm gonna like show me the trailer in a couple of years. I'll be much more interested in then. I, I suppose show me a trailer, a teaser, probably by next year sometime. If this thing's coming out April 2026, so yeah, that's I'm fine. Wait until then to really be a saving room in my brain thinking about this movie. It is just weird how like the difference between movies and games, I guess, right? Because like movies always kind of get announced. Basically, when they're like finally actually greenlit and gonna happen, right? Whereas with video games, Nintendo still won't just tell us who's making that Princess Peach <laughs> Showtime game, which is still wild to me. Yep, like, weird. What, like, wait till the game comes out. They say, like, wait till the game comes out. Like, why don't you tell me now? What are you talking about? Oh, but you want to talk about like Nintendo fans and how they could be weird in some ways? Like, I just tweeted about how this is weird. You sh you should have seen the Defense Force come out to explain to me why it wasn't weird, and actually, I'm the weird one for <laughs> thinking it was weird. <laughs> That's always helpful. That really makes you a better person, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, last thing here, Jeff, we did get uh, three new NSO games announced. All Mario games, which is cute. Mario Golf, uh, Mario Tennis, and Dr. Mario. All the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color versions of these. Uh, they are now out on NSO as of this day. I haven't got to check these out yet, but pretty excited. These, uh, these two sports games are the first Camelot ones that have the RPG mode. The Game Boy Advance ones are the other ones. Uh, Dr. Mario, whatever. But I'm sure you're pretty happy about this also. Yeah, I, I am. I um I like these games a lot. Uh I think 
I think what's going to happen is even more people are going to play these and they're going to be like, oh, this is what all these old ass people are talking about all the time when they complain about the modern sports games from Mario. Uh, these RPGs do rule. They are great. They are great stories. It's just great RPG mechanics. Um, yeah, I, I, I wish we lived in a world where games like this could still happen frequently from Nintendo. Um, and then when we got a sequel to Golf Story that it wasn't kind of disappointing, that'd be nice too. Uh, but yeah. hey, I'm okay with going back to these and replaying them because it's like not something I'm playing every year. I am. I played a ton of golf, uh, Mario Golf, when it came out. And then I've checked back in on it a couple times, but never did a full real playthrough again. And maybe now will be the excuse to do that. You usually talk about golf more than you talk about tennis. Do you, do you like the tennis one? Is it not quite your thing? No, it, it is. I just, I spent so much more time on golf that I think um, when I like realized tennis had a similar thing, I was like, oh, this is awesome. And I played some of it, but I did not go into it as hard as I did on Mario Golf. Yeah. But I mean, it, yeah, it, it really I, also is very good. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to uh, be able to check these out. These are kind of two of like, like this and the Game Boy Advance ones, you can give me either of them, and I hope we get the GBA ones eventually later. But these were like among the, especially in terms of the Game Boy library, ones that I did really want there. I still think it's weird that the first Mario Land just isn't in there, especially when we're uh, adding Mario games, which uh, I want to play for the soundtrack pretty much more than anything else. But still, that absence is uh, is somewhat strange there. Yeah. Well, uh, all right, that's it for our little news segment. Why don't we take a break? We'll come back. I see we've got some super chats. We can look at those. Got those ready to go. Woo! All right, break. You want to walk? You want to walk? We can just go right to it, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Just jump into it. Yeah, whenever you're ready, Mike. And we are back, Jeff. Uh, why don't we check out some of these uh, super chats, please? Yeah, starting with uh, Big Jimbo Ryan says, Hi, doggies. I've heard you have been wanting news in a certified racing franchise, correct? Dramatic pause. Anyway, <gasps> here's Wonderwall. Okay, thanks, Jim. <laughs> Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. Okay, get it, get it, get your ass out of here, Jim Ryan. I He's drunk again. Anybody feels the way I do about mm -hmm. you now. Uh, Big Fresh Thirty Seven says it's play wait Captain to Toad about... Week. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Well, you'll say that again. I have things to say about Jim, Big Jim O'Ryan. Oh, sure, go ahead. I, speaking of racing games, I need to check out the um, whatever they're calling Top Gun now in that collection. I haven't gotten that yet. Top I Racer. To that, I need to get that Top Racer collection. Speaking of games that I kind of want to play just for the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, I it actually that I want to play those games, but it really makes me want to play Top Racer Rally for uh, or Top Gear Rally for N sixty four. Uh, which was in that midway uh, VHS yeah. that we watched. Right, but how's the soundtrack on that one? I Probably not as good as the Super Nintendo games, no. Man, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, when I, So there was like a Mario Day celebration at a local brewery. I told you about that. They had a band there that was playing some Mario songs and other things. They were great. They had like a saxophonist and a keyboardist. Uh, and they were doing some GoldenEye tracks. And I know I talked some shit about GoldenEye. Got nothing but respect for that soundtrack, though. Oh, <laughs> of course. Jam on that live. Although... The best song they played, they did aquatic ambiance from uh, Donkey Kong Country and with the saxophone guy, like, like, holy shit. Maybe we, I, I know we've done a Mount Rushmore soundtracks, but if we did like a Mount Rushmore, just individual song tracks, I wonder if aquatic ambiance gets up there. God, I it, think would, it, might. It, would, it would it would have a chance for sure. It would have um, a pretty good chance because that song, I, I, I even prefer Sticker Bush Symphony from the sequel from yeah, Donkey Kong Sticker Country Bush 2 Symphony more. is great, yeah. But it's not as important as aquatic ambiance. Oh my Man, god! Like okay. that, you listen to that song. Like this is important. <laughs> this means, it's like right, you're uh, you're the you're the guy from uh, Close Encounters. This means something. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we it's uh, the uh, the music we would put on the album that we send out to aliens is a uh, yeah mm. aquatic ambiance. It's on Carl Sagan's uh, gold Gold, disc, gold, yes. golden record. Yeah, uh, Big Fresh Thirty Seven says it's play Captain Toad week. Um, all right. uh, look, it might be play Captain Toad year. It's right, give us a week. year. We'll see what we can do for you. <laughs> but I love the dedication, Big Fresh. Thank you. Uh, Big Fresh 37 says, Multiverses is coming back, and I'm so excited. Not even those hating ass haters on Gay Mess Mornings yesterday yeah. could bring me down. Hey, look, I was always a bit of a, not a hater, but I was always a bit like, this is fun. It's not nearly as good as Smash Brothers, but it's fun. Uh, he would always look, bring up Smash Brothers, though. He's, he's right about that. Yeah. That would even be though nobody spell. ever said, yeah, even though nobody ever said that, like nobody <laughs> ever, everybody who played multiverse was like, this is fun. And I was really laying into that straw, man. Fun. I know. Uh, hey, look, I hope <laughs> it succeeds. I, I do. Um, 
you know, any game with Steven Universe in it, uh, it's fine. They should add Paradot, though. There's the character from that that I want. Or Pearl, even. But, but yeah, more Steven Universe characters. Uh, there you go. Um, the, the one thing that I really do dislike about the game is I I, I don't mind free-to-play stuff. I, I, I don't mind the store and buying costumes. I hate the free-to-play games that are like League of Legends or whatever, where it's like, your character is level 12, and now they have a third gem slot. Now, pick the gem that you want to do. Is it like plus 5% critical hit rate? Like, no, or these badges. Like, yeah. I don't want any of that shit. That shit is so yes. awful. Not even League of Legends does that anymore. Like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, this it's not such a thing. That's like the runes, they, it's been rewarded for like maybe like six years already. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, good, because it was always real fucking stupid. Uh, maybe they got rid of yes, that between yeah. the early access and now. We'll yeah, see. We will find out in May. Uh, all right, B. Traven says, what if Mario had a gun? He did in uh, the uh, Mario plus Rabbids yeah. Kingdom Battle. Yeah, but what if he uh, said like, like a, a Beretta cannon. or a Glock? Like, yeah. like Shadow the like a Shadow the Hedgehog gun. Yeah, sure, Desert Eagle. Yeah, yeah. Well, then he would fucking shoot somebody. Yeah, and someone should take him out. That's why we have snipers posted. Take out Mario. Uh, Visualizer says, "What if Mario sees the means of production?" <laughs> oh, wait a second. You might be cooking here. Yeah, you got Let something. Got something happening there. Uh, L. Grug says, what if Mario was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. Just a stranger on a bus trying to make his way home. Do you know what that's a reference to, Mike? Yes, Jeff, I know what that's a reference to. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I, I, never know with you in, I never know with you in music, all right? It, yeah. like, that one felt like a Mikey one, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, Do Dr. Evil sang it in uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Austin Powers 2. The yeah. Spy Who Shagged Me. Hey, to be fair, that's where I know it from, too. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Uh, Power Glover dropped a super chat with no message. Thank you so much, Power Glover. Uh, Dat Boy Jerry says, with the year anniversary of Tears of the Kingdom approaching, Jesus, uh, any chance we get DLC oh, wow. or is Nintendo focusing all their efforts on Switch 2? I haven't even thought about that. We did get a good amount of DLC for the first one. I guess I don't know why we wouldn't for Tears of the Kingdom. I did, I, why am I remembering them saying that there wouldn't be DLC for Tears of the Kingdom? Maybe that was another game that that was affecting, but I, I thought for some reason we wouldn't get DLC for Tears of the Kingdom. Like, I don't know what else they'd be doing. I mean, maybe they're like, wow, this took a long time to make. Maybe we need to just get working on the next Zelda right away. We can't spend time okay. on this. Yeah, a Adam GC in chat says they confirmed there wouldn't be. And yeah, they okay. said in an interview in September that they wouldn't be doing DLC. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, that sounds right. I, that To me, that means they're making sure that it's ready to go for a uh, uh, for Switch 2. And they'll like make sure that there's like something to put on, on Switch 2. And then... You think like, the Switch 2 version will have like stuff that maybe was like, maybe. DLC before? Like, it's a possibility, yeah. Just At least a motorcycle again. or something. Yeah, bring the motorcycle back. Sure, why not? Um, let's see where we at. Okay, yeah, the Uncharted Wolf says, Toriyama's passing hit me hard, so I decided to finally take the plunge into his other major series, Dragon Quest. Any advice or things to know? Mike. Yeah, just play Dragon Quest XI first. It's the newest one. It's probably the best one. Uh, just, just start with that. It's on a million platforms. It's great on Switch. It's great on a bunch of things. So play that one first, and, you know, with, like, any JRPG, I... I Especially once I'm playing for the first time, I always do like to go and look for like, like Dragon Quest Eleven tips. There's always somebody that just writes some things like things you should know just generally about how that game works in terms of like certain mechanics that that can help you. Um, but otherwise, Dragon Quest is relatively straightforward. Just play Eleven. You'll you'll have a great time. It's uh, and then after that, there's a whole bunch of them that you can discover. Uh, it's it's hard. To like necessarily get a hold of certain some of them because they're still stuck on platforms. I like five a lot, but the last released version of that was on the DS, I believe. I still have no idea what that Dragon Quest Three HD 2D remake is. We haven't heard about that in a while. Yeah, that's probably gonna happen soon, though. I, I hope it does. Uh, that could be at a, a direct later this year. Um, Antonio Morales says, "My dogs, you guys going to SummerSlam? Can I come? Thanks. I'm going. You can come, not with us, but you can go. Yeah, with my son." I, I mean, I'm definitely planning on it. I mean, why the hell not, right? Uh, yeah. We, we need to show Dan, whoever else comes, some some actual Cleveland spots. You know, when I was talking to Dan, like, very recently, he was he, he was pretty sure that you lived near Columbus and not Cleveland. Oh, very good for him. Very, very. <laughs> he, he literally, uh, like, drove here and was, like, right next to Cleveland when he did so. He probably just wasn't paying attention, right? Cause the, the, let, the, <laughs> let the GPS do the driving. Um, exactly. Incredible. Uh, he he still doesn't know that I'm in the Eastern Time Zone. Uh, right, he always gets that confused about both of us. Yeah, 
Let's uh, say all the can. God damn. Um, David Ladla, Ladla, excuse me. David Ladow says Luigi's Mansions all have great video game toilets. We can do a What's video. your favorite video game toilet? Um, it's only it's video game related. It's the Skibbity toilet, which you still haven't looked up because you don't. You're not my real friend. The what? Skibbity toilet. All right, look it up right now. Yeah, look it up right now. Yeah. You're gonna need oh, audio. Yeah. Skibbity mm -hmm. toilet. Yeah. Oh, it's this a, is gonna be a thing. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's a steam. Oh. <laughs> mm. Steam filmmaker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Continue describing it. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> That's you know what's funny is that my answer is Half Life Two <laughs> when it comes to best toilets. So. Well, there you go. Yeah, that makes sense then. Ah, uh, shouts to Skibbity Toilet. Um. No. T Bucket 23 says uh, FWBD, Warner Brothers, uh, for aiming to pull those Adult Swim games in May. I was worried Battleship Brigade would go, but thankfully the de developer got publishing rights. Yeah, that, oh, good. Is, that is fantastic. On for the right of game. Yeah. Hopefully more of that happens game. then. Uh, Josh Page, Page says, always look forward to your live shows. Thank you so much, Josh. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Josh, for first, a super chat there. That was their first super chat. Thank That's you. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that does it for the super chats, Mike. At least so far. When did Skibbity Toys come out? Because that has some like real. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Ten years ago, energy. I think, it, I, I think it came out recently. Recently. Yeah, I think this no. is like. I think this is like a. One I thought a year ago. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Like yeah, 2022. Yeah, I think this is like yeah. the humor's come back around, and now we're here at, at Skibbity we're just Toilet. Back to YouTube poop, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And honestly, that's better. I mean, this that's is better. so much better than most of the things that happen on YouTube. There's like a whole that's series true. of skibbity toilets, and they're all like 30 seconds long. Oh, there it goes again. I need to turn that off. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah, stop skibbitying. <laughs> yeah, I'll never stop skibbitying. skibbitying, Dad. You are my no. You're my dad. Didn't you see the picture? Oh, that's or right. Mom. Sorry. You're my mom. I'm your mom. Yeah. Mommy. I'm, I'm mommy. Um. Yeah. What do you think is up with Cape Middleton? I I think uh, I'm with the uh. She's dead. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. Um, uh, oh, you're fucking oh, dead, bro. Oh. They're gonna get you for laughing. Uh, no, I should look. <laughs> look, your delivery oh, is very good. Uh, uh, so Chad. Jeff, yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> you're Would right. You please read this super chat. Uh, from Chris Limbright. Uh, should the next thing Nintendo 99s be uh, a Kirby Air Ride City City Trial mode because that was a sneaky good mode that could be upscaled for more people? I don't remember what City Trial mode was like. I kind of don't either, but I do know that Kirby Air Ride is very good and simple in a very fun way. Uh, if they made more Kirby Air Ride in general, I would be very very happy about What's that. That should just be like be the next thing. They always make like Kirby side games. They should just make like a twenty dollar new Kirby Air Ride. That game never had a whole lot of content anyway, so twenty dollars maybe would be the right price. Uh, okay, price okay, okay, don't do it, Sean. I, don't do it, Sean. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Jeff, I know how to explain City Trial to you in a way that will make you want it. Oh, okay, cool. Roguelike. Oh, okay. Oh. You you build you build your uh, little star thing. Ooh, okay. What you right. call my Oh, little star. Yes. <laughs> He's not talking about your <laughs> anus for once. <laughs> <laughs> little. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah. Th th that's the. Now we're all caught up on Super Chats, and we only made one bad Kate Middleton joke. So I think we're set up for that segment. Yeah, this is a, this is a good show. We good did. Why don't show. We take another break. We'll be right back. We have uh, Nintendo 3DS hidden gems. <laughs> they try to hide them. I'm not going to fucking get, allow it. Get out of here, Jim. We know where you gems. are. Stop trying to hide from me, Jim. Shine it up real nice <laughs> and show it to the whole <laughs> diggity dog world. Look at my Jim. We'll be right back. All I right, you did that. Out. No, no, no. <laughs> <You're back. laughs> yeah, sounds All good. Right. I need to do something here. Give me one <laughs> second. No, this is not the. This is. I need the. Skippity. Skippity. More. Everything I, I need to know more. about that video in relation to me and the internet is the fact that I first heard from Lexi. That's that's all I need to yeah, know. About yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's, right that's right. Yes, yes, it's totally destroying her generation's sense of humor. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. it's Zoomer stuff. Yes, it's, it's Zoomer okay. stuff. Yeah, y'all yeah, can it, have it. It's the best of the Zoomer stuff. It definitely is, but it's Zoomer stuff. 
Listen, my generation was shit like Power Thirst and stuff. You know what? Oh, hell yeah. Skippy Toilet's going to age With a lot better power than Power Thirst. Legs. <laughs> Ener- oh, wait, energy <laughs> legs, yeah. yeah. Man, Power Thirst is great. Uh, early Why YouTube was I wild. This? Oh. Never mind then. I'm now I'm loading that sound then. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Visualizer's right. It's Gen Alpha. I forget that's a thing. I was introduced to oh, that on right, podcast right, right. like the other day. I'm like, Oh god, there's people younger than Zoomers. Fuck, that's no, right. We can't have that. Yeah, oh, no. yeah. My sister is Gen Z. She's twenty. Well, it was the cut. It has there. to be younger people than twenty, I guess. It can't. I mean, the, the cutoff can't be t- like happening too soon, right? Because it's like, like I'm the I'm basically the cutoff from uh, millennial. OK, like, yeah, like my age and like well, one and, year and I'm like, a, I'm an, an elder millennial and I'm 40 yeah. and I'm like not quite the oldest millennial. <laughs> elder millennial. Yeah, like, that's the range about 15 years. So I guess yeah. Zoomers go down to what? 13 is that the, sounds I'm right. Yeah. Math. Yeah. It's because I hate women. <laughs> oh, Why is it me? Shit! God, well, I wanted you to retweet that it. tweet <laughs> so bad, and then I thought I was like, "Oh, maybe it's good that he didn't retweet that tweet." Yeah, you should just give it a like. Yeah, so just okay. give, give it some time. Maybe one day. <laughs> give it some time. Yeah. Not an AM. Mm-hmm. What the hell's corpse party? That's a uh, oh Wii baby, game. you are in for a roller coaster if you want to get into that shit. Wait, why the fuck is Jeff Grubb saying the the title "Corpse Party"? What what's going on here? Corpse Party is a. Uh, I'm, a I'm like I'm looking for my my hidden 3ds yeah. gem, and apparently that's uh, a hidden 3ds. Oh gem. yeah, Corpse Party is oh, like a, it's like, like a porn doing his homework. No porn. <laughs> sorry, well, we got a second it's here. Like body horror shit. Okay. Well, there's horror. some weird stuff know. out there. No, it's it's just it's just uh, it's just it's just creepy like pasta, horror. Jason. Yeah, it, it, oh, yeah, okay. it is. Yeah. yeah, it's Japanese. It's like this whole subgenre horror. of like RPG maker horror games, and it sort of like slots into that sort of. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's more of a vision level though. Yeah. But yeah, it's like yeah, it definitely. Like is. Yeah, you're right. I never, I never even touched one of those. So I don't know. All right, Mike is back. He's chewing on something. And being some cereal. No, mm, yeah, cool. Yeah, do that right yeah. on the mic. Yeah. Cereal, cereal for dinner, like they said on Fox News. Some Honey Nut Checks. Underrated they have top honey tier nut cereal. Checks? I don't oh, yeah. even know what oh, the, the combination of word means. Fucking best, dude. You don't fucking even, you don't even, you don't even know. Oh, it's so goddamn good. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, well, then. Remember Cold Sept? No. Cold yeah, Sep. I was just looking Cold at that Sep? the other day because Cold Sep Revolt. You look at that cover; that's Kinu Nishimura again. The uh, the artist that brought the art week. Oh, oh, right. not not called a sack. Excuse me, no. Cold Sep. No, no. Cold, no. Cold, 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 Cold Sep. Just Cold, Cold Sep is the most American thing ever. Don't worry about it. And yet, it, <laughs> yeah, it's a French term, right? Isn't it? Cold Sep. Yeah, 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 I believe it's French for these nuts, Jeff. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's a sack joke. It is a sack uh, joke. Sacks. I mean, it is. Yeah. Yeah. French. That's that's funny. Right? French. <laughs> uh, are we ready? Yeah. So. Are we ready? I don't know, bro. I'm you were ready. making jokes about the missing lady. The missing lady. <laughs> the missing lady. All right. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. You seem distracted. What are you looking at? I'm just trying to see if I can find a better hidden gem than the one I have in my head. <laughs> you keep that up, don't yep. worry. And we're back. We're talking about th- hidden 3DS gems. I believe I'll go first for no reason in <laughs> particular. Um, I've been thinking about. I actually been talking about this game a little bit recently because we. Uh, I did an episode of '90s Disney about uh, Castle of Illusion. But when Epic Mickey Two came out and they made the sort of tra- a traditional back then uh, portable adjacent game for 3DS. Uh, they made Epic Mickey Power of Illusion, so set within, like, the Epic Mickey universe. But the gameplay and even the story uh, was was all uh, uh, Castle of Illusion-based. The, the villain from Castle of Illusion is there. It is a 2D game where you have Mickey's, like, butt-bouncing ability from Castle of Illusion. A bit non-linear. I don't know if you go, say, Metroidvania, but you got to do fun things like uh, explore, and you would find Disney characters and send them back to your home base and things like that. 
Uh, I just thought this game was a lot of fun. It rarely ever gets talked about. There's always a lot of love for Castle Illusion out there. And this just sort of was a new one of those. It's my favorite Epic Mickey game. Yeah, I, I, I remember this one being like considered better at the time, but then no one ever talked about it ever again. No one talks about it, and I think there were a lot of reviews who like pegged it for kind of, you know, the things that games got pegged for a lot, especially back then. Like, oh, it was kind of short. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, same reason Princess Peach pegs Mario. Am I right? I'm sorry. Jeff, that's inappropriate. You're right. I'm Jeff, sorry. I'd like to for, uh, formal apology to everybody who's been All listening. Right. Wait, we'll see what uh, we'll see what the king says. Uh how about you, Jeff? Yeah, I, I was I was gonna go with the out outrun uh, uh, 3D again, which is the one I mentioned a lot. But, yeah, and it is amazing. Uh, and people don't really know that those 3D games that are those 3D converted games uh, are actually really great. But I'm gonna go with Inazuma Eleven, which is a, a action RPG soccer game. Um, that is actually pretty solid and it's, you know, you, you got to do like a lot, a lot of RPG stuff between the matches, but then you get on the, the, um, the field and it's all controlled with the touch screen. It actually is like a pretty good action RPG. Like that does, it does a decent job of converting that into soccer and making it feel like strategic and like your choices matter. Um, and I spent uh, quite some time with this game and liked it quite a bit. And it's one I always want to go back to and play a lot more of. And I think it's like a long running series, but this is the first time I had ever, encountered in, yeah. a, in a zuma game and it was it was pretty good cool yeah i never uh i've never uh played that before but it sounds neat uh you ready to see what our podcast producers uh offer up here for i am ready uh, I'm gonna, i'll I'm get it up here curious. on the screen for everybody very curious because uh yeah you know I, I, it's we talked about how the ds yeah it's similar. Was sort of oops all hidden gems but 3ds for me is almost to me the games i really think about actually are more just like the Zelda game from Nintendo, the Mario game from Nintendo, uh, you know, Fire Emblem, things like that. It's a lot more just big first party Nintendo games for me. So I'm kind of excited to see what people consider the the hidden gems on this one. Uh, Rebirth Wolf 5 said the last good game in a childhood franchise for me. It's Scribblenauts Unlimited. I, I remember liking the first Scribblenauts and finding the whole thing really cool. I, I remember there was even at the time a bit of a design flaw where you could kind of find one thing you could keep summoning over and over again, like Superman or something, right? Yeah, and like it would solve an angel with a gun. Yeah, and it could fly yes. anywhere and do anything, and we couldn't harm it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know if they ever kind of got past that issue. Uh, Slain says, not sure how hidden this one is, but I need more people uh, want a third one of these. Damn it. Uh, I need more people that want to throw one of these. It's Picross 3D Round Two. God, I mean, they made a lot of these Picross games. You freaks oh, there's a Picross. ton of Picross games. There's, I think, but I think there are only the two Picross 3D games. Nick Turbos is a great hidden rhythm game on the 3DS. Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure. I uh, actually have only heard good things about this game. It's actually a Sega joint. Um, I do want to check this one out. Uh, I'm glad Nick Turbo brought this up because it's something I always wanted to play. So at some point here, I need to get the 3DS out again. There's uh, so many 3DS games that I do want to play. It's such a good system. Yep, I, I got mine out recently. and have it all set up and, and hacked and everything ready to go. So I'll check this out. Uh, Casual says, is Rhythm Paradise hidden? If not, it's this game for me. Uh, this is Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia. Uh, Fire Emblem Echoes Shadow of Valencia. This was the remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden. Right. Uh, that came up late in the 3DS. Uh it definitely didn't get as much attention as, say, Fates or uh, Awakening did. I didn't even uh, play this one, which is too bad. I, I heard very I good either. things about this. Apparently, this one has some like dungeon crawling elements, which is pretty unique for the series or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I'd like to sometime go back to that. Domino Crossy says every game released after the Switch is a hidden gem according to sales data. There's Metroid Samus Returns. There's another game that uh, could be ported over to the Switch at any moment's notice, right? Remastered for Switch. I think, yeah, I mean, I would love it. I think that'd be fantastic if we could get that. Um, that's like doing Luigi's Mansion 2, I mean. Yeah, exactly. So why not give us this one? That'd be great. Bench JC says, it's a shame this franchise died because it was a very fun Pokemon clone. It's Yokai Watch. Did Yokai Watch die? Is it died? It burned very bright and very yeah. fast. And I, I mean, I suppose, I guess I don't know it's officially dead, dead, but I know it's not what it was. Did you ever play Yokai Watch? I think I tried it and couldn't really get into it. This game rules. But it's way better than Pokemon. Bye. <laughs> don't worry, Sean. We don't have to respond to ridiculous statements like that. Input name here says Attack of the Friday Monsters, a Tokyo Tale, part of the Guild series of games by Level 5. More Level 5 love here. Um, level 5 just loves games about Japanese children in a Japanese suburb, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I think I do too. I think yeah. Level 5 knows what they're doing. This game looks yeah. fun. 
Jeremy Biff says, fully voiced Wario. This is WarioWare Gold, the ultimate WarioWare game, right? Yeah, I, and t I think technically a hidden gem because it came out after the Switch came out, so almost no one bought this game. Mr. Boar says, the only way to truly appreciate it, it seems they're still doing 3DS rentals at the Louvre base on their website. This is the Nintendo 3DS Guide to the Louvre, the famous art museum in Paris. I actually went to the Louvre about uh, seven years ago, and yeah, this was there. I can't, I almost can't remember if I if I used it or not, but it was definitely there for rentals at that time. It's funny if they still do. It was a, I, I love that this exists. Jeff. Yes. I, I, honestly, I mean, that was a huge thing with the DS and less of a thing with the 3DS where it's like weird applications, re weird real world like uses where you could like, um, you could use the DS to order beers and hot dogs at Seattle Mariners games, things like that. Um, and so, yeah, the fact that that lived on and had stuff like this with the 3DS. This also reminds me of people uh, videotaping concerts with their 3DS and oh, how that's, yeah. beca that's become popular again because it had oh, the yeah. 3D camera on it, and that's, that's pretty fun. It was like uh, smartphones before smartphones, almost. Yeah, but, like, with, but with personality. <laughs> um, GameCube Chris says, Resident Evil, this game rules. Everyone, please play it. This is Resident Evil Revelations, which, man... Uh, I, I did never play this one. I do want to play it. I wonder, because I know there's like HD versions of it now. Part of me wants to play it on 3DS. And have I played it, it, I played on it on 3DS 3D. when it came out. It was great. But, you know, um, I like the idea of doing a Resident Evil on a boat. That makes sense to sure, me. Sure, yeah, it does, yeah. I God, I barely remember it, but I definitely played this game, played through it, and re remember enjoying it. Lenny, cool, Dick Denver says, Ever Oasis. Man, I forgot about Ever Oasis. This was like straight up Nintendo towards the end of the uh the 3ds and it's it's an action rpg i remember the ding around it was that it was kind of simple but still generally well received um this was grezzo that made this that actually makes a lot of sense actually this is uh grezzo huh part of me is like man wonder what's going on with ever oasis i mean i'm sure we're <laughs> never going to get a sequel or anything probably but, not. yeah that that's going to stay on the 3ds forever probably mm -hmm. Uh, Joyzy says sequel to the DS episode DS subtitle pun honorable mentions, but only I know two: uh, Kingdom Hearts 3D, Dream Drop Distance, and Kirby Triple Deluxe. Well, you know what? More. Kudos to those two games. Yeah, I, but he might, they might be right. That might, might be it. That's a shame. I, I guess I guess Dream Drop Distance rings so large in my brain uh, as right. being like such a, a stretch to get to the 3Ds. <clears throat> Uh, that maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But for some reason, I thought there were more. I think it took years for me to realize that Triple Deluxe was a play on 3D. Yeah, for sure. Um, that, that one, that one's clever. Cyclone <clears throat> uh, says, not sh uh, just a really fun pick cross game, but also the gateway to jailbreaking your 3DS. Oh, Pokemon pick cross. Man, they, again, more of these pick crosses. Yeah, but pick cross is great. Now with Pokemans. Jamie H., one two two four says never finished it, but I remember enjoying it. Final Fantasy Explorers. I do not remember Final Fantasy Explorers. What is this? No idea. It's from Enix Square, though. So I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Final Fantasy Explorers. I mean, I remember most of the spinoffs and stuff. What the hell? Final Fantasy Explorers is an action role playing game for the 3DS. It keeps your features job oriented combat. It looks like Xenoblade. <laughs> Like what? What? Uh, oh, quest-driven structure similar to Crystal Chronicles and Monster Hunter, uh, or Luigi's Mansion Two, I might add. Uh, okay, <laughs> huh? Man, I have no memory of this one. That's interesting. Evil Janice says, "Get yourself some level five legendaries with relative ease and a little time commitment." It's Pokemon Dream Radar. <laughs> this might be more of an app than anything. I don't know. Uh, Super Harm says, pick this up on a whim because I like the idea of a sports RPG and loved how earnest it was. Hey, Speaking yeah. of level five, shout out to my girlfriend who put 1,000 hours into fancy life. There's your Inazuma 11. Go. Light. Man, level five. Pretty prolific on the oh, 3DS. Oh, yeah. Huh? Level five was eating it up on the on the 3DS. Chaos Buckaroo says, shout out the post-Switch Versal console releases with previously unavailable content included. Yeah, I forgot that we did actually get a crystal version of Pokemon on the Switch. Apparently, that released in January 26th. 2018 gen 2 always very good stuff oh this is interesting. hammond of texas says uh tom Clancy's ghost recon shadow wars grub frequently mentions he likes this game and so do i the game is basically a turn-based grid-based tactics game like advanced word fire emblem but what if it's ghost recon yeah i have this game somewhere fit, fit the physical version 
it's it's really solid. It really is like a very good Fire Emblem like, but with you know soldiers and guns. It's wild. Uh, Cryor says, "Sorry, you paid too much for a 3DS. Enjoy Metroid Fusion. It's the Ambassador Certificate. I had the Ambassador Certificate, and guess what? I did enjoy Metroid Fusion. <laughs> uh, I played a lot of those games that we got. Yoshi's Island, <laughs> so, right? Was that one of them? Well, it was the Game Boy Advance version of Yoshi's Island, but yes, I played through Yoshi's Island again. Uh, I think it was Fire Emblem Sacred Stones we had as part of that. Mm, uh God, there were there, there definitely other things, but uh, it was a lot. It was actually pretty, uh, pretty neat. Dr. Ryan says, if there was any game more deserving of limited run to have made a physical copy of, it is Pushmo. There's Pushmo. It's never a giant Pushmo guy, Jeff. I like Pushmo. I like Crashmo. I like all those games. They're good. Tommy Petzl says, if you don't like it, you'll go to Nintendo or Nintendo Pound. Oh, here's Minish Cap. That was another one. Right. Uh, you never came around on Minish Cap, huh? No. Yeah, well, we don't talk oh, what, about what was the day. phrase? The 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 language. The Capcom. Or... Yeah, I, guess, I, I don't know. Yeah, but... Look, we, don't have to, we don't have to bring up old. We don't have to reinstigate old old yeah, games. Game design. <laughs> I mean... It's like the most Legend of Zelda looking ass thing. Like a five pots and an arrow pointing to a crack <laughs> in the wall. And they'd be like, I don't know what to do. I can't decipher this Capcom game. <laughs> I feel like, like this is a gross, language. gross <laughs> mischaracterization of what I said. But sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Michael Riley says, oh, he has a fake mock-up of Virtual Boy on 3DS. I still can't believe they didn't do that. That is criminal. Yep. Well, wow. cr- we criminals get, did it, but yes. How did we not get every 3DS? Because they're embarrassed like, of the Virtual Boy. Every, get over it! Yeah, they that should get over it. Ago. Yep. I agree. Oh, God. Uh, Isaac Clark says, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Here's Dragon Quest Eight: Journey of the Cursed King. This is a uh, very good port, although if you're like me uh, and got upset when you found out that the U.S. version doesn't have orchestrated music while the Japanese version did, you then jailbreak your 3DS just to put that in there. Oh, uh, crazy. Leah Cool says, I have played hundreds of hours of this series. That's kind of a problem. There's theater rhythm, Final Fantasy. Yeah, I played a ton of this 3DS version. That version we got on the Switch recently is even better. Yeah, theater pe- rhythm is very good. I love those games. Yeah, they should um, They should do that with e- even more stuff. Although I know the Final Fantasy music is great. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, like, you know, they did like the Kingdom Hearts one. It's kind of well, like that, but nothing else. That's uh, that's uh, what's uh, y- Yoko Shimomura, though. Come on. You know, you love her. Uh, they do. <laughs> Beef Hammer says, unlike that double A podcaster Mike Minotti with Tekken, I only play real 3D fighting games. <laughs> Here's Super Street Fighter 4 3D edition. Hey, this was pretty neat to and have. And it was uh, really 3D. Yeah. Was cool. yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, from what I can when remember, like. The, the, sorry, when you do the critical R or whatever, you went like the camera it went crazy and it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the only like real like noticeable big drawback was the still backgrounds instead of animated ones. I'm sure there were other things, but Hey, got to play street fighter four on the go. That was fun. Mitch Sarugi says, if you enjoy Dragon Ball and like the idea of fusing your favorite characters together, this game is perfect for you. Also rest in peace to the goat Akira Toriyama. It's Dragon Ball fusions. Uh, Jeff, are you more of a fusion guy, a fusion dance guy, or do you like the earring method? Um, I, I, I don't like the idea of fusing characters together in general. Um, really? Yeah. Well, like, Why not? I don't know if I like anything more. Why I, you hate I, I don't. I, I don't like the idea of like two in, just bespoke, individual, distinct oh, this thinking is about, this creatures. Is space right, dust, right, isn't it? All right. <laughs> you know what? It might be about time cop. Uh, time cop taught me that if you do this, you explode. Uh, I don't like it. Yeah, but that's just fusing with yourself, okay. not with other being. You're oh, right. All right, all right. On that point, in the last, the last time they fuse in the movies, the the guy who tr- turns into like the fusion guy is like, I'm I'm just enjoying myself because these two are becoming super strong, and eventually they're not gonna need me anymore. So like, I'm just having fun with this fight, and that yeah. killed me. I was like, that's such a like beautiful piece of writing for that character that you see like twice in the entire like run of the show i'm not saying they don't so do it good cool. but yeah i just yeah, but I have two things to say to you uh okay. first off you're probably like the one kid who got mad when all the power rangers combined their zords together no you're no like, that's hey, fine that's they lost zords. Their individuality <laughs> they that's, zords. that's them coming together to make something bigger this is like two people coming mm-hmm. together to make another person i don't, I don't know There's like, there's there's after they diffuse they should like disappear this, well, the second, the second uh, thing I want to say is there's an episode of Star Trek Voyager called Two Vix that I think you should watch. I oh, think you no. actually okay. really enjoy that. Oh, no. uh, 
get uh, it came out like uh, 30 years ago star trek fans still get hotly debatable about it oh okay all right well then i definitely will watch it still get shoot hot over two vix um daniel says seven out of ten dungeon car with a 10 out of 10 soundtrack this is dragon seventh dragon what I man, look at this logo. I have no idea how to say this game. I'm gonna this game. Seventh Dragon 3 Code VFD. Uh, incredible. I think you're right. <laughs> There's like yeah, a that's seventh the name. That's the name. It's in the D. Uh okay. Yeah. All right, I, then. I, man, I, I have no memory of this game, by the and way. The, the the colon is after code, which is after the three. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. Always be clothing says bravely default. Uh, you know, like bravely default got a lot of love, uh, but like still probably not enough people played it. Bravely second is the one that like some people were almost against it a little bit just because the composer changed more than anything else. Right. I like bravely second a lot, so I liked it a lot more than bravely default too. Uh, bravely Sorry, the art is so same. beautiful in this game. It's just like I love oh, yeah. the art in this game. It's such such a good art. Yep, it's great. Matt Rare Monkey says, sadly, we only got the second release in the U.S., but the uh, full triple pack of the Sega 3D Classics is the true hidden gem. Yeah, all these Sega 3D Classics were uh, super, super cool. I even love this art of it here. Yep. Um, oh, man, I forgot that Echo was part of this. I could be playing Echo in 3D. Yeah. You guys know who did that artwork? Uh, is For it, this right here? Uh, is yeah. it uh, Christian Whitehead? No, uh, Ken Sugimori, the Pokemon guy. Oh, wow. Oh. Cool. Who's this... Um, Who's this lady that kind of <laughs> is wearing like the uh, April O'Neil outfit on? I knew you. Yeah, yeah, I was like waiting for it. <laughs> is this April O'Neil lady? I don't know. Is she from Al is she from uh Alien Syndrome or something? I'm trying to be from Alien Syndrome. I'm trying to do process of elimination and I can't figure it out. Big Tony, the Final Fancy guy says Persona Q, Shadow of the Labyrinth. Uh I played this game. I liked it. I realized that I don't this was kind of my first Etrian Odyssey style game. That's basically what this is. And I found some of the Etrian Odyssey stuff a little obnoxious. It's like you have to draw the map constantly. It's very much mostly a dungeon crawler with a story that is not important, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I guess uh, I, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have my Persona games be a little bit less... Uh, you, you, want, you want to feel like you're like the time you're spending in these things it's building towards something probably yeah. right and like this game is just straight up like these all these people came together and that's wacky they're gonna forget about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's gonna, that's um, it's gonna be worse yeah, than it's all a dream it's uh -huh. gonna be uh they're gonna lose their memory yeah whatever um good game though it's fun pablo costa sushi striker the way of sushido i do remember hearing good things about this too, one, yeah yeah they talked about this one a lot i think nintendo did this, this was a nintendo published game i think right I don't know. I don't see her, their logo on here, but I don't see anybody's logo on. Plays only in 2D, that says. I was like, we get that tag yeah. on a 3DS game. Uh, B, a ho, says SMT4 really uh, struck out to me, and I would love a remaster of this game. It's gotten a little more popular years, but I feel it's a bit niche. Um, I'd be shocked if we don't at some point get remasters or remakes of this and Armageddon. This, uh, this one right here is the one mainline SMT game that I did play all the way uh, through of. And it's, you know, I liked it, but the same thing kind of with Persona Q, right? It's a bit more dungeon callery, the story stuff, not really that important. So, like, we just, like something about that when I finish the game, like, I have fun, but I'm kind of a bit like, ah, oh, that didn't, that, that wasn't important. I right. <laughs> oh, I said Armageddon. Thank you, Nick Turbo. Shin Megami Tensei for uh, Apocalypse. Ap sensei apocalypse. Like sensei. Sen sensei. I knew I was going to say it wrong. Uh, apocalypse. Thank you. Adam GC has Cave Story. Uh, I do like the 3ds version of cave story because i like the little 3d effects there it probably is a my favorite way to play that game for sure zub Merce says i was committed to buying at least one new release every month that's how i ended up playing brave oh. default and project mirai 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 will say i remember getting this during a slow summer release schedule smart games can sell better with the vacant months of wisdom tomb raider and many others ignored um this is a this is a hatsune miku game jeff yes uh, I'm, I'm i am crazy for hot sunny miku yeah me too i can't get enough of her uh clank says hey sure shin megami tense tensei strange journey <laughs> yeah. there we go i did it so this is another this is the uh another sot game this is a remaster of one that uh originally came out on the ds this is the one that is a lot like the thing uh this is a lot of people's favorite it's uh i, I did play some of this uh I, I did stop at some point but i was enjoying it is this one is this one that has been remade uh for this this is the this is the remake master 
This is kind of the remake, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I want to check this out. Nocturne, the PS2 one, was the one that got like uh, a, a remaster recently on okay. Switch. All right. Well, I'm going to check this out. Uh, Wong guess says, Yasumi Matsuno's last game to date, Crimson Shout. Honorable mention, Attack of the Friday Monsters and Liberation Mate. Crimson Sh- Shroud. What is that? That sounds familiar. Crimson Shroud. Yeah, I don't remember uh, that either. It's a role-playing game developed and pushed by Guess Who, Jeff. Guess Who developed I'm gonna go, I'm this gonna, game? I'm going to go with Level 5. It was Level 5. We How many teams is Level 5 fucking have? They were just cranking them out during the DS Man. and the 3DS. Look at the uh, incredible. Yeah, it was, it was level five. So uh, there you go. That kind of gives you an idea of what kind of game it probably was, too. <laughs> um, Octo says, Fantasy Life was really charming, and it's getting a sequel this year. Also, Port Kid Icarus Uprising. Damn it. I want to experience that bunker story with Saint Controls. I still expect Kid Icarus Uprising to come to Switch. Maybe even Switch this year. Maybe Switch to later. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, know. maybe Switch this year. That could that would really fill out the release schedule. J.D. Camp says, too bad Nintendo did uh, Grandpa Minotti to Rusty. <laughs> we don't talk about Grandpa Minotti no more. <laughs> uh, incredible. Uh, that's uh, Rusty's real deal baseball, which Chef has sung praises of many, many times. Uh, yeah, I love that. Uh, Bugadillo says, this game's basically fantasy hey. monopoly with deck building elements really unique. There's Cold Sep Revolt. Yeah, Cold Sep's like, goes back to like the PS2 days, I think. Pow Boomer of Persia 2077 says one of the best games of 3DS that initially released their first SteamWorld Dig. Yep. I didn't know it was a, a 3DS joiner uh, before anything else. How about that? I mean, yeah, well, quite a few indie games were doing that on the 3DS. Not as much as we would do it on the Switch, but yeah, yeah. 3DS started that. I think I, I think that's actually where I was first playing uh, Shovel Knight was that's on where 3DS. I even. definitely played Shovel Knight first on 3DS, yes. Yeah. Breadfish says, um, <clears throat> uh, Senren Kagura. Don't pretend Breast? like you don't know how to say it. Breast? It's burst, I think. <laughs> okay, it's I can't, the, the font is bad, and it's small. Uh-huh. You can see why I thought that word was breast. And uh-huh. also because of the cover art. Uh-huh. <laughs> is this the yeah. real cover art of this game? No way. I think yes. it is, yeah. Yes, it, is. it actually yeah, is. 100%. This game is out on... Penny, I think it's, down, I this game is out on... <laughs> We've had this before. Don't pretend like you've never seen this before. I don't remember <laughs> this. Don't pretend like you don't own it. That's, um... Pizuri or something. Um, uh, oh, Pi. Uh, Mike, Pizuri is something very, very Pizuri. different. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Please, nah. please read the next one. Please read the next one. He's, he's, he's in a depressed, trance, everybody. Depressed me crying, <laughs> says. <laughs> Chat's funny. Uh, the Cookie Mama series. <laughs> We're going to Cookie Mama. Huh? <laughs> the Cookie Mama series. Gives me a glimpse of what having a mom who loves me could be like. Oh my god! <laughs> it's Cooking Mama Five. Bon appetit! All right. Remember um that like fake Cooking Mama game or something that, right, was, that was released on Switch? that was like mining crypto on your Switch? Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, that ruled. I, I miss Man when says, there was still love left in the world. Yeah, me too. Wii's Man says Nintendo always comes up with cool, interesting shit that no one else uses, and they only do one thing with it. Face Raiders. That's right. We had that oh, AR yeah. game that was actually pretty fun. Just Could, with the if you were to open your thing. 3ds right now, who is your face raider? That's a good question. I think mine is oh. still it would still be my cat. Mine would probably just be me because I'm a narcissist. <laughs> uh, Ali Merrick Veza Crystal says no crystal though, but it's Star Fox 64 3D. Um, this was a very fun. Uh, remake of Star Fox 64 and playing it on the 3DS was pretty cool. Obviously this kind of game just works with it very well. Yeah. I Service should. a crystal. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I got to do yeah, thank you. I should go back and play this first. I don't know how much I ever played of this version. It's a good idea though. That'd be a great way to play Star Fox 64. I think 64. I played it better. Uh, yeah, it's a good way of playing my uh, Star Fox 64. Mm, okay. For sure. Uh, Inu faces Radiant Historia. Uh, this is the uh kind of updated version that came out 3ds this was a ds game i think i talked about this during the ds hidden gems this is in a uh, traditional jrpg released by atlas that a lot of people says has big chrono trigger vibes um generally is brought up as one of the more underappreciated jrpgs ever although christian in the chat is saying it's ass what? <laughs> so... i didn't say anything there's no i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> uh this is definitely a big one on my back catalog i gotta actually see if uh I should be playing the 3DS version or if like the DS version is better or something. I don't know. Fluffy Cloud Gamer says Rhythm Paradise Mega Mix. Is this the last Rhythm Heaven game we got? 
Uh, Must be, right? I think so, right, because the one before that was we, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, rhythm, r- rhythm, par- rhythm, mega mix. Yeah, rhythm paradise, rhythm heaven. Uh, rhythm he- paradise yeah. in like yes. Europe is what. Yes, I, rhythm yeah. heaven uh, mega mix was fantastic. It's a really good compilation of all the stuff, yeah. just like Warrior Wear Gold was. You're not allowed to make references to heaven in Europe. They don't believe in that. That's right. Yeah, they're all communists there. Uh, Willow Davis says, uh, <laughs> "Halo Three ODST." I only had <laughs> Pokemon Animal Crossing. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Service Kane says the best mercenaries has ever been. I'll never stop being disappointed. We never got a standalone cons- console mercenary games like this. This is Resident Evil: The Mercenaries 3D from a uh, Capcom. A lot of good Capcom stuff on the 3DS. Huh? Could, could you play this game now? Like if you had like a hand, like a bunch of 3DSs in one place, or would you have to have no like idea. online servers? I wonder if like you well, could... normal. I, I don't, I'd ever play much, but more normal mercenaries you played by yourself a lot. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, but the, there's mercenaries a mo- isn't the co-op mode. This is like the. Oh, um, so there, is there no multiplayer mode in this? Is this just like I have no the? Idea. Okay, it's like the run mode. It's yeah, like it's just, uh, just doing runs. Okay, all right. Yeah. Take says easy. It's Rusty's real deal baseball. There you go. And then uh, Terry Sean said somebody played this game. It existed, and we got fucking Rod Man, Mega Man Legends three. Uh, that is, that is, it is just uh, wild how they. Announced this, made a big deal, and then canceled it. Like, hey, you know what? I don't give a shit about you canceling Mega Man Universe and right. whatever else. Th- this was weird, man. Uh, yeah, this hurts. This one does hurt. Ugh. Uh, look at the, even this art and this logo. It looks so cool. Come on. Especially because like that was the last chance we really had for it when you could make it as a 3DS game and it wasn't going to be that expensive. Like now... Man, not I gonna bought make... a 3DS for this game. I, yeah. That was so sad. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, it was fucked up. It was fucked up, though. So, yeah, giant bummer. All right, that's it, Jeff. Uh, why don't we take our break? We'll come back, read the last Super Chats, talk about what we've been playing, and then we'll wrap things up here. Sounds good. All right. All right. Jump back in whenever. Uh, yeah, he, I'm ready. He did say Pi Suri instead of Opai. That was funny, yeah. What's Opai? All right. Opai I I, means I boots think, in Japanese. I think I meant what I meant. Uh... All right, we'll talk after. Oh, yeah, no. just, we have a yeah, we have an HR reunion, reunion, or meeting, whatever. Let's just go. And we're back, Jeff. Would you please read some more super chats? Yeah, let's see where we left off. I think we read this Josh Page one. I think we read this Chris Limbright one. So let's go with our truth. Who's back? Oh no! It says, "Hey, Bubba and Devin, what's up? My 3D <laughs> hidden gem, T-Bone. spelled T-Bone, Jeff. J-I-M, is the one you all did to the Jeff Hardy at WrestleMania. Oh man, you got us." Yeah, he got it. <laughs> Our truth yeah. is going deep this time. All right, well, Avon, get the tables. <laughs> I look forward to your uh, your your next super chat. Our truth. Uh, Thank Bur- you, super Our truth. Burrito says this one's for the mods, and they're excellent. Decontextualized sampling of Jeff Grubb being his worst self. We don't. It's because I hate women. Son of a bitch. <laughs> So, God damn it, Jeff! That's a terrible thing to say. It is a terrible come on, thing. We are going to come for Zelda. Okay, oh. we just had International Women's Day. Yeah. Come on. It's, well, I wasn't reading it or anything. That's not out of context. Uh, Allie Miracle says I had my 11 year old nephew school me about Yokai Watch when he saw my whipper, my whisper go mount in Final Fantasy 14. Kids love it, maybe. Yeah, you kind of watch like caught on even outside of oh, Japan. Kids did like yeah. it. Even yeah, my like niece knew what it was at some point, like when she was younger, but I, I haven't heard anything about it in a while. And then uh she oh no, Dr. Ryan says, one more 3DS gem. James Noir's Hollywood Crimes, a latent knockoff set as a as a sixties oh. game show with real people moving only two frames. Watch a vid, it's wild. Incredible. Okay. That sounds insane. I will check that out. And then uh, Shigeru Miyamoto says, this is Miyamoto. God, I'm so excited to work with my friend, Cool Chris. His wart is unlike anything you've ever heard. (laughs) (laughs) C plus M forever heart emoji. I mean, that would be the ultimate swagger move if it actually was an adaptation of the U.S. Super Mario Brothers 2. That would rule. I would love that. That would actually probably make for a great movie, too. Um, Except for the whole thing. It would be in a dream. Uh, Yeah. Hey, uh, sorry to spoil Super Mario Brothers 2 for everybody. My bad. Uh, Mike, that does <laughs> it for the done. Super Chats. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you got a little bit more time to get one in here. Like this Allie Miracle right says, the real hidden gem is Street Pass R.I.P. Man, Wait, those, uh, those E3s with Street Pass, that ruled. Yep. 
Although, kind of shocking you with that, I didn't like fill out all of those stupid puzzles. <laughs> like, still, or whatever. yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I did either. Um, <laughs> it would just be drowned in yeah. 3DSs. But uh, I, uh, I think the most famous person I ever shoot street passed with was Reggie. I did get the real Reggie, there not the go. not not the Hell fake yeah. like gold pants Reggie that everyone got. You did it. Thank you. Um, Jeff, I haven't been able, I've been playing a ton of Nintendo stuff, still mostly working for Persona 3 at night on my Roger Ally. Did play some Super Mario Brothers, uh, World, though, or Super Mario World, when, uh, I was at that, uh, that beer brewery right. Mario Day event. They had that set up. They are having people doing a contest to see who can get the lowest score after so many levels. Uh, that's still a very good game. I like that. That's one I could just uh, always go back to and play. And every time I get back to it, it just immediately feels very good. Yep, it's um, great. You know, Super Mario Wonder was great, but uh, Wor- uh, World is definitely still my favorite 2D Mario game. Yeah, I mean, World is kind of like one of those perfect video games to me that I think mm-hmm. about. Like when I think about a video game, I want it to be like Super Mario Brothers World. I um, exactly. I have. Have you been playing anything else, or should I just get into what? Because I've been playing. Go ahead. Tomb Raider one through three remastered, which I've been playing on Steam Deck, but it works on Switch. Um, yeah. I mean, those games are (laughs) what they are. Uh, they're. I'm glad that they exist. I'm glad exactly, and they did a good job. They gave it some extra quality of life love if you need that. Um, it's you know, there's really generous auto aiming with the classic controls, and that doesn't work quite as well when you switch to modern controls. So I've been playing with classic controls, which is the tank controls. That's fine. That's how the games were made to sure. be played. It's like I got used to it really quick. Um, the games are just, you know, they're slow, methodical, and kind of boring. Well, have you have you only played the first one? Have you played the sequels? I'm, I've not dived, dove into the so, sequels yet. I'm just so when the I, first one. Yeah, like last year when I was playing Tomb Raider 1, I was like playing a lot of old PS1 games. I'm like, none of these have actually aged. Actually, everyone's wrong. And then Tomb Raider 1 was the one. Where I was like, okay, that's enough of that. Um, I did have some people say that like 2 and 3 do play at least noticeably better. So I don't know. Maybe it's worth at least checking out like the first level of one of the other ones and seeing. I, if there's I, I played really a bunch a of Tomb Raider two at the time. I don't think I ever played much three. So maybe I'll just maybe hop just to play, three. Tr- play three. Yeah, it, it's funny because even though like when I played Tomb Raider one, I didn't. You know, I, I I was more like it was more of a intellectual curiosity. Or anything. I still kind of do want this. I want to be able to like maybe play through these and at least see what's going yeah, on. Like I, I again, I think they did a good job with what is there. I don't like hate these games. I, it's not that. It's just it's it mostly is huh. All the fuss over this is kind of where I'm at with it, which is you know whatever. They are still interesting games, curiosities, and um, there's something there in terms of I, I like the look. You know, you know, you could flip between the modern remake visuals and the classic visuals. And, you know, you go back to those 30 frames per second and the really ugly uh, textures. And I think there's something there where it's like, this looks interesting at the very least. Yeah. And then having a game that, like, is a 3D cinematic platform in a, a platformer in a lot of ways, it's also also kind of interesting. I just feel like playing it wasn't, like, blowing my socks off. That's all. I'm trying to think. It's like So much of uh, Tomb Raider's success was obviously a lot of factors. But, I mean, like, seriously, like, you know, we all joke about Laura Croft. At least in the West, at least in the U.S., it was the first time I really remember a game being popular, kind of just because it was sort of sexy. Yes. Uh, that was not really a thing. I think part of it was just the industry had grown up to a point where there were enough teenagers and things like that yeah. uh, interested in games now. I don't know. Uh, but that was, uh, I mean, a huge part of Tomb Raider. Yeah. And like, another part, early 3D game, uh, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, all that played a factor for sure. But it's Lara, Lara Croft being like, like a cover model for some like right. magazines that weren't game related. Like that happened. Right. Um, oh, she has a British accent. She's exotic, but in a way that makes me feel safe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, she She's like Mary Poppins. Right. <laughs> she won't colonize me. I, I know it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was weird at the time. I definitely remember thinking like, oh, those games, they must be good. People are so wild for them. And then they are what they are. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm glad I'm playing them at the very least. I think I'm going to see one of these games through at the very least. Uh, probably, I might switch over to three and go from there. Maybe if I, especially if I like the first level three, I'm I'll try the first like level you three. Difference. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll do that. Um, and then I uh I've been playing more Bellatro. Um, Bellatro, yeah, yeah, I've gotten a lot more wins in that now. Starting to get the hang of it in a way that's like oh, okay, I, I understand what to do here to actually succeed. And it's it's just really good when you, when everything is popping off. It, it's it's such a satisfying game. Um, mm-hmm. Really, it's it's definitely one of those ones where I'm like, is, is this the flavor of the minute, or is it going to be something I actually am thinking about at the end of the year? And it's like, oh, I think this might be the kind of game I could play forever. 
um, and come back to you know regularly throughout the rest of my life. So I'm, I'm right right now. It's definitely in the conversation for my top five at the end of the year. It is pretty incredible how like kind of once you do get a hang on it, how much more you start winning. Right? It's not yep. just luck. It's like you really do know what you're looking for, what things to prioritize. Like I said, early on, like the only thing my brain could even handle was uh, flush runs. Right. And But you could do so much better than flush runs once you really figure it out. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's like you just need to play the hand that that your the build is best with, and that could be anything. It, you don't you know, put pairs, you know, high, high right. card. A lot of that stuff does, you know, if you got one where it's like, hey, yeah. you get bonus if you play a hand that's exactly four cards. It's like, okay, well, I'll do two. I'm going to level up two pairs and four of a kind. And then if I get that card where I can make a straight or a flush with four cards, well, now we're in business. Um, so, yeah, the, it's just being able to, like, roll with the punches like that is real, is a cool thing as well. Instead of getting so hung up on, like, I had a, run, a good run with that. I want to recreate that. Right. Now, it's way more fun to, like, just be like, this is what it's giving me. What can I do with this? Jazz Cabbage asked what uh, our highest blinds are. I forget. I, th I think I made it to, like, the first round of anti 11 once finally. And that was my biggest, I believe that's uh, yeah. I think I got to like anti 10 or maybe 11 on my most it recent. Up very quickly. It goes, yeah, yes, it goes, it gets out of hand fast. Yeah. But the, the one where it was like, everything was just adding multi X multipliers on top of everything else. Uh, that was going really well, but I've never had like a billion, uh, a, a chip hand like uh Bailey did Bailey's that tweet where she had like a billion points. That was right, wild. Right. Good stuff. Um, anything else? We got one more super chat here. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Connell Woods says, I blame you all for my weekend loss to Bellatro. Yep. Fair. I get it. That's, uh, I think it's responsibility. It's going to keep catching on too as more people discover it for sure. I, uh, I literally forgot to do groceries and then I didn't have anything to eat. Like one night that I started playing yep. Bellatro, I was like, oh, fuck, <laughs> five hours. What? It's like 11 p.m. What are we gonna do? That's how it goes. Um, but yeah, no, that that does it for me, Mike. Uh, other than that, it's just catching up on some other games and uh, playing some more review stuff. I don't have any review stuff. Uh, you, you and your review stuff. I'm not. It's starting. Uh, to, it's just popping off recently in the last couple of days. Yeah. Well, you got to. I'm glad I don't worry about reviews. I'm, we're going to be traveling anyways. That's hey, true. Pax. But hey, if you're, if you're going to Pax East, hopefully we'll be able to say hi uh see you there come to the panels there's a bunch uh couple i'm gonna be at jeff you're gonna be at a couple more you're gonna you're gonna be in kind of feudy is that right yeah i'm gonna be on kind of feudy eh, i'm looking forward to that gotta, a lot i gotta go so i can heckle i mean support you <laughs> well no you're gonna come there to help me cheat right you're gonna be oops. well i mean you know i'd be pretty good at oh I mean, you do know i'm pretty good at, we won at uh, our game of the year panel yes we did i mean it's mostly my best friend tamor's uh help that did that but still yeah tam crushed it uh, I'm, I'm, I am looking forward to that. So yeah, it's going to be a fun weekend. And then, oh, um, a Roadhouse comes out on Prime Video the Thursday we God. get into Boston, and Dan wants to watch that. Of course he does. Oh, of course he does. All right. I kind of want to watch it too. <laughs> it's a great movie. Uh, I know you do. I know you do. Hell yeah. Well, Jeff, sometimes you simply know when you just recorded the worst podcast in history. That's right, Mike. <laughs> Maybe for real this time. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, uh, uh, we've got. We've got Blight Club tomorrow. Jeff's got to uh, play Super 64. Um, I, I, he's he's got to switch difficulty at some point. He might just do it at the end. Everybody always gets mad at me that like I'm not just like making him do things in the most painful way possible. I'm just like, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> right. does, it's not worth it. I don't care. Uh, I do want to make sure for his sake that he actually can. Somebody just told me you can change the difficulty whenever. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe that person was lying. I don't know. I mean, if it's if it's wrong, I mean, then, then he just has to restart at the end, then and play the whole game yeah, over be, again. I bet he'll be very excited to do that. Yeah, well, that's his problem. I will tell. I always want to tell him this because, like, I for the speed run, I had to beat mythologies on very very hard. I noticed no difference. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I thought you. Yeah, that, that would be my guess. Bye, everybody. Bye. Talking about Rohad with Patrick Swayze, not the no. Rohad with Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal.
Why is no one talking about the cuck tent scene?